she really is wild rose isn't she <laughs> it was so yeah it basically gave me license to be as naughty as i possibly wanted for like five weeks it was great <laughs> Actually, a lot of fun to play. Oh, it was so much fun to play, and and, and 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 like underneath the fun and the like, kind of rebellion, there's a real human heart in it. And she's a mother, and she's a daughter, and she's a Glasgow gal, and she's a musician, and she's a dreamer, and she's an inspiring, courageous woman who, despite the limits that she's been told she's allowed to dream in, keeps fighting for what she believes is her destiny it's, it's interesting because for kind of a, a lot of the film which she could be portrayed as selfish um, and so but was it a di it was it a difficult balance to, to keep the audience rooted in this character so that we didn't lose heart in her and we kept believing in her yeah well I think for anybody I think there's always moments in our life, I think she's incredibly relatable. None of us swan through life making all the right choices. I certainly don't and have definitely <laughs> like dealt some really cards that I probably shouldn't have done, but they're the ones that you learn the most from and you actually learn the most about who you are, what you want to say and uh, the person that you want to be in the world. Um, so I never saw it as selfish, well she is selfish sometimes, but I suppose it was just somebody who was willing to push the boundaries of what was possible for her. You must have been blown away when you read this script. Yeah, I'm very lucky to be part of it, definitely man. It's an amazing story from Glasgow as well. The music is very much a character in this as well as Wild Rose. Yeah, definitely man. No, we had this scene in the Grand Old Opry which was like huge, so many people and that Really, like, yeah, the energy that she put in it, that was incredible. It was amazing to watch. And, and what, did you know, what did you like about the, the character that you were playing? Well, it's just amazing to be part of this story, I think. Like, reading it, the writing's incredible, and I think Glasgow's going to love this film. It's good to have a film that's not about drugs for once. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, it definitely feels like it, it, it is a love letter to, to Glasgow, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I think a lot of us in Glasgow as well, we, we have to work on the same side as our dreams as well, because... There's not a lot of money poured into Will Will Face, so to have your dream and still have a career at the same time and balance that is it tells that story really well, I think. And do you think um, what I felt as well from from the story was that it, it felt very authentic? Um, is that what you felt when you read? Yeah, it? definitely. Like it, it could be took from a day in Glasgow straight away, straight off the page. And uh, did, you, did you get to work with Julie Walters at all? I wasn't in any of the same scenes, but I think we were around the same sort of places. But I mean, she's she's incredible, isn't she? Oh no, she's. And what was it like working with Jessie? Oh, she's amazing, man. She's amazing. You had some interesting scenes. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> you got to be brave, no? But I think, especially with Jess, like some of the scenes that we did, are they're very exposing, and to have somebody you don't feel safe with is a bit hard. And I felt very safe, and well, I hope she did as well. That like, we. We really, like, yeah, I feel very lucky to work with her. It's nice to you, what, what, because of uh, needing that trust and that's, and that's a kind of place of safety, was there kind of much kind of rehearsal and, and, and time to kind of get, get to know each other? Yeah, I, I, that, a lot of that preparation is on your own as well and how you come into the scene. Like, if you don't come in prepared, you're <laughs> good luck. Like, but yeah, no, the whole, every, the crew, everybody, like that, all, all these sort of scenes revolve around everybody working together in a real ensemble and I think the, ev that was there every single day on this show. When you were at the Grand Ole Opry, you'd have heard Jessie singing for real. I mean, that must have been incredible. No, she's amazing. Like she, she made you cry straight up. <laughs> Actually, a film that does. Make I think so. Like, it's passionate, and we're passionate people. And she's a very she, she you wouldn't she's Glaswegian through and through. <laughs> Exciting evening because you have got such a wonderful film. Uh, what was it that attracted you to the screenplay when you first read it? Uh, I think it's the character of Rose Lynn. I think she's such a kind of vibrant, energetic, crazy, <laughs> uh, brilliant character, and I just sort of immediately fell in love with her. And just her issues, like trying to uh, trying to fulfil her dreams at the same time as trying to bring up a small family, just seemed really important and resonant. I've got two small kids myself, and my wife and I struggle <laughs> struggle with kind of careers and balancing that with childcare and stuff all the time. And it just feels like something that's that's not not very often looked at. I mean, what I felt was very kind of relatable um, as well is is that it's there isn't kind of, there's this this is story of optimism um, and drive and ambition, um, but without kind of running away with this kind of Hollywood dream kind of story. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I think that was really Im important to try and capture that because obviously there's a lot of kind of fulfill your dream type stories out there. But I think what Nicole's done so beautifully with the script is like it sort of it does fo follow that that path in many ways. But every time it does slightly something different or it undercuts it in some way. Or and I think I hope at the end of it, you know, you realise actually it's not about fame or fortune. It's more it's more about um, kind of reconciling the different parts of yourself. And, and Jesse, did, did she sing live? Yeah, Jesse did sing live. Every song was done, recorded live on set. Um, so yeah, yeah, good. I mean, I think I don't think it would have sounded the same or would have had the same atmosphere. And so much of the performance is based around the singing that to separate it and record it afterwards from the the moment when she was doing it would seem somehow fake. And we've tried to be as truthful as possible wherever we can. Yeah. I went to see a Star Is Born, and it's obviously comparative. A, a, a small town girl trying hard and it's just a beautiful journey and to watch it and actually be in the film when Jessie was singing we couldn't react and go yes we had to go all right cut scene and hold all the emotions in so that was difficult because she is incredible when she sings oh, my god her music makes your ovaries twitch it's that good literally my ovaries went what's happening and it was her singing it's hard to follow that up. Um, and so but being on camera for film and, and being a, obviously a live stand-up performer, but kind of different disciplines, how did you find that kind of transition? Was that kind of tricky? Really difficult because I talk, people laugh. And there I talk and everybody just went quite, went cut. I went, right, this is not my medium. But um, I've acted before I actually wrote a play and the play went off Broadway. So I've been, I've been an actor before. But this was just the most unbelievable opportunity and I can't thank the people enough. The story itself is really fabulous, isn't it? Oh my God, it's such a Glasgow story. Everybody wants to be a singer and everybody wants to be a star and, and the, the film portrays that so well. And, and Nicole Taylor's writing is so on point, it's so succinct and so brilliant that when I read the script I thought, there is nothing else I want to do but this film. So obviously we've got Rose, which is the central protagonist, but then you've got country music that seems very much a character in this film as well. Damn straight, that's why I wrote it. I mean, that is my passion in life. There's nothing else that I know more about or care more about, really, than country music. So I was desperate to just write it down. And, and so with that being kind of the central kind of core of the film, how did you then develop this really wild rose around the, 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 the scene of country music, I suppose? I had this girl in my head for years and years and years and as characters always are, they're, a, they're an amalgam of so many different people. Um, I think the film was partly inspired by seeing an episode of The X Factor many years ago where a contestant sang and she was wonderful and then after they showed the VT and revealed that she's got a very messed up home life and three kids in care and so on. And it was interesting because I suddenly didn't know what to want for her. I didn't know whether because she's so talented, that's enough and you should just wash your hands of real life. Or once you're a mum, does that mean you have to put away childish things and just get on with, um, you know, responsibility? So any good drama, I think, is born out of a good argument on both sides. So that's kind of where the central conceit of the story came from. And I think what's interesting about this film is the, the, and that adds to its authenticity, is that it's a very much a story that's optimistic. Um, and there's a theme of optimism through it. Um, but it doesn't run away with the Hollywood dream either. So did you work very hard to just to keep that balance and keep it relatable, I suppose? To be honest, I did not know how this film would end until I went to Nashville. And somehow that just unlocked something for me. Um, I don't want to say more than that because I don't want to spoil the film, but it was a hell of a thing to know where to end it. And I think also it's really um, inspired by my own relationship with my own mum. So we had to get through our own psychodrama before I could finish the damn thing. So yeah, we got Act 3 done. And um, I suppose it, I, I'm really happy with it because it just says everything that I really do feel um, and I've been trying to say for years. This is very much a story of kind of never giving up on your dream and, and never giving up the fight, really. Is that what you felt? Yeah, it's a story, you know, it's the classic story of the underdog, but as always with Nicole's amazing brain and writing, she's found her way through that story. Um, Nicole's amazing country fan, loves country music, and I think in some ways felt quite an outsider in that hobby that she had. Um, I'm also fascinated when I read, when, when Nicole first talked to me about the idea, you know, that thing of, um, about Amy Winehouse, 
in that what it is to be that amazingly talented, to be that sort of raw, raw nerve, but not be able to navigate life within that, um, and what that means to be an artist. Actually, I'm, I'm really interested, and I, you know, I really wanted to make sure the film wasn't a movie about sh motherhood versus career, and of course, it's very much part of that. But hopefully, we um, balance the line that we we walk on that in regards to what it is really like for people in real life. Yes, I do, I, 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 that's the the thing that feels very authentic about the about this film is um, that there isn't this kind of Hollywood ending, and it just feels um, something that we could all ins could, could inspire us, and and it's a, sort of achievable. Yeah, I think everyone. I wanted. I wanted, and I know Nicole did, and Tom too, is that everyone can take their own own journey from it, and that it feels universal to everybody. Whatever your plight is, wanting to do.